And with a nice sharp pencil, I'm simply gonna come along, get as absolute close to this edge as I can. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna be cutting through some decals, but no problem. I have uh, another set of them. Got them from uh, Cali Graphics, and uh, she does a wonderful job. And you know, when we uh, splice them, there will be a small gap, but the resin will fill that, so it's not a problem. So I'll sort this piece out by uh, placing it in the mold when it's all cut. Now that we've got a nice uh, fine line, we can uh, get ahead and uh, cut it. So I'm just using the Dremel with a cut off wheel and that'll make short work of it. So how are we gonna do this? Well, I think I'm just gonna get a crap load of wax just uh, three or four inches in because we don't need to do the whole thing because we're not laying up a new part but we don't want it sticking to the uh, tail end that we're gonna be uh, putting on okay here's the rub we have this uh, all together now so uh, my intent is to try and get a little clay all around this seam here so that when we're laying it up, the resin can't get behind. So I've got some tape on the inside, try and keep it as clean as possible. Shit. <laughs> First time I do it on camera. Anyhow. Um, so I'm just going to sort of go around here and punch it into the seam like we did with the uh, fuselage and see if this works. So I need one of our trusty uh, credit cards. Just give me a salt. There we go. Now I'm just going to scrape back the clay so it's flush with the uh, mold flange and all will be good. Then before we lay up, we'll... Uh, Alcohol the inside, resend it, alcohol it again. Make sure there's no uh, contamination of this inside junk because that is super critical to keep the tail to the front. And if that fails, then we're going to be doing another uh, crash video. <laughs> All right. Um, I've shot the mold in uh, PVA. I've not done the rear section because I don't want to risk it getting inside. So, uh, we'll this, let this uh, dry for about 15 minutes. I'll go inside uh, the house and have a nice cup of tea. With the uh, mold already primed, I'm going to uh, just thicken up some resin and put it in this seam here that you can see on the screen. And that should hopefully stop the uh, thin resin from leaching through and getting all over the fuselage. So we'll see. Now it's time to start uh, doing the detail on the mold. So what I've done is I've thickened up some resin and gone around all the uh, details where appropriate rivets, panel lines, that kind of thing, screws I should say. And uh, now I'm applying the three quarter ounce cloth with just some uh, regular resin, the thin stuff. And this will uh, highlight all the details without getting voids, hopefully, on the entire fuselage. So we'll get that done. We're laying up the uh, two ounce cloth right now. And uh, this is uh, six by 12 inch pieces. That I'm doing I'm overlapping that joint just into the tail a little bit I'm gonna have to put a couple of cuts in this because this fuselage is quite curvy it's like some girl I knew back in my teens <laughs> but anyhow um, that's another story so I've already done this side and I'm doing 
that side, then this side. So I remember exactly what I did to each side. So they balanced. I've switched from the uh, one inch brush to the two inch. Now that I'm doing the main body, it will just make things go a lot faster and uh, spread the resin much easier. I'll finish applying all the uh, two ounce cloth through the entire uh, fuselage and then we'll switch to the six ounce. Now I'm laying up the uh, six ounce cloth and what I'm doing here is I've put a full length piece just along the spine of the uh, aircraft and overlapping into the tail section that we've added uh, by about three to four inches. I'll continue to apply six by 12 inch uh, segments of the six ounce cloth overlapping by approximately three quarters of an inch with each piece. This will basically uh, double up like a strengthening rib without adding hardly any weight whatsoever. And I use this technique on all my planes and they come out pretty light and pretty strong. All right, we've got the uh, top half of the mold laid up. Everything went well. Three quarter ounce cloth and resin on the fine details. Two ounce cloth across the entire body, overlapping for strength. Followed by six ounce overlapping. Carbon fiber put at the, uh, the wing spar area and the outboard uh, part of the wing here in the fuselage. That's uh, to reduce flex. And it looks like uh, we did pretty good here. I've overlapped into the rear tail section up to where you can see the vertical stab just beginning here. So uh, now we have to basically work on this guy here. Okay, so we have the top of the mold finished. Uh, we've now uh, got the bottom of the mold finished. Uh, laid up and now it's time to mix it some thickened uh, resin to uh, glue the two halves together. With the uh, resin or as I call it goop ready to go uh, I'm now just going to place it into a uh, pastry bag which is in this uh, can and then cut the tip off and then we'll whip around the edges top and bottom and apply the goop or the glue. Take your time when you're applying the uh, goop. You want to get about maybe, let's say, a quarter of an inch uh, bead around the very uh, edge of the mold and the flange, the parting plane. And uh, once the two parts come together, uh, you should have a really good glue. What I do is I tend to flip the mold after about five minutes and keep turning it upside down like gravity. Uh, mix the glue and pull it down and uh, it gives me a really good seam. Now we're going to apply the uh, goop to the other half, which in this case is the top of the fuselage uh, mold. And uh, once we've done this, then we'll uh, splice them together and put the screws in and we should be happy. I misjudged the uh, goop thickness a little bit. I could have gone a little thicker as, uh, as I'm applying it, I'm seeing it... Uh, begin running down the edge and inside the uh, laid up part. Uh, it's not ideal, but again, you don't want it too thick because it can becomes too dry and then you don't get a good adhesion. So I'll just live with it and by flipping the mold, as I've said previously, uh, this will take care of that and we'll get a good cross weld. Now it's time to join the two halves of the mold. The goop is on uh, both sides. Uh, you've got to be extremely careful here. And uh, what I do is I basically try and just align the alignment dots up 
and just pop it into position as you've just seen. I'm currently just installing some temporary clamps just to lock everything together. It gets the uh, pretty much an instant alignment. Uh, it doesn't squeeze the two halves together that much, and, but that'll uh, take place once I get the screws in. Right now, I just need to get everything in place so I can move on to uh, nuts and bolts to so screw everything together. So once the clamps are in place, that means the two, uh, two mould halves have aligned with the alignment dots. And I can move on now to uh, putting the nuts and bolts in, which will thoroughly clamp the moulds together and tighten up the seams so we get very, very minimal flashing. So now I have the top and bottom, left and right, and the tail section all bolted together. It's somewhere around the region of about a hundred nuts and bolts and multiple parts of this mold. And I flipped it up and down a couple of times to uh, get the resin to flow and waited about five minutes in between each one. With everything uh, bolted together, we can take a look from the nose to the tail from the inside and you can see on the sides where the seams are that the resin has flowed, cr is uh, cross flowed, which has given me a good weld and uh, the tail section is all nice and tight. I don't think there's any run out in it, so everything should be good. I was also able to uh, put a brush on the end of a long uh, stick and apply the tape to the seams. So the seams have now been over taped over the welds and everything is ready to uh, pull them apart and split everything out once the uh, resin dries.